Let us now pray the Oratio Imperata for protection against COVID-19. Please all kneel. Merciful and compassionate Father, we come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 that has disturbed and claimed many lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand, Dispel the fear of sickness and death. Restore our hope and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. We thank you for the vaccines developed made possible by your guiding hands. Bless our efforts to use these vaccines to end the pandemic in our country. We pray for our health workers that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Our Lady, Health of the Sick, Pray for us. Saint Joseph, Pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel, Pray for us. San Roque. Pray for us. San Lorenzo Ruiz. Pray for us. San Pedro Calungsod. Pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, the Church celebrates today the Sunday of the Word of God. We are reminded that one of the greatest gifts of God to us is His Word because He wants to change our person. Let our hearts be open to change by opening our hearts to God's Word. Today also, we greet the communities, not only here in our country but in the whole world, who celebrate the Lunar New Year, the Spring Festival. May the Word of God be your source of blessing in this new year. To prepare ourselves to celebrate this Holy Mass, let us first acknowledge our sins and humbly ask the Lord for His pardon and strength.
Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, direct our actions according to your good pleasure, that in the name of your beloved Son, we may abound in good works. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. First, the Lord degraded the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali. But in the end, he has glorified the seaward road, the land west of the Jordan, and the district of the Gentiles. Anguish has taken wing, dispelled is darkness, for there is no gloom, where but now there was distress. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Upon those who dwelt in the land of gloom, a light has shone. You have brought them abundant joy and great rejoicing, as they rejoice before you as at the harvest, as people make merry when dividing spoils. For the yoke that burdened them, the pole on their shoulder, and the rod of their taskmaster, you have smashed as on the day of Midian. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. my light and my salvation. Whom should I fear? The Lord is my life's refuge. Of whom should I be afraid? The Lord is my light and my salvation. One thing I ask of the Lord, this I seek, to dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, that I may gaze on the loveliness of the Lord and contemplate His temple. So I believe that I shall see the bounty of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord with courage. Be stout-hearted and wait for the Lord. The Lord is my A reading.
reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. I urge you, brothers and sisters, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree in what you say, and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be united in the same mind and in the same purpose. For it has been reported to me about you, my brothers and sisters, by Chloe's people, that there are rivalries among you. I mean, that each of you is saying, I belong to Paul, or I belong to Apollos, or I belong to Cephas, or I belong to Christ. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified by you? Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel, and not with the wisdom of human eloquence, so that the cross of Christ might not be emptied of its meaning. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus heard that John had been arrested, he withdrew to Galilee. He left Nazareth and went to live in Capernaum by the sea in the region of Zebulun and Naphtali, that what had been said through Isaiah the prophet might be fulfilled, land of Zebulun and land of Naphtali, the way to the sea, beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. The people who sit in darkness have seen a great light on those dwelling in a land overshadowed by death, light has arisen. From that time on, Jesus began to preach and say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. As he was walking by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who is called Peter, and his brother Andrew, casting a net into the sea. They were fishermen. He said to them, Come after me, and I will make you fishers of men. At once, they left their nets and followed him. He walked along from there and saw two other brothers, James the son of Zebedee and his brother John. They were in a boat with their father, Zebedee, mending their nets. He called them, and immediately they left their boat and their father and followed him. He went around all of Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom, and curing every disease and illness among the people. Brothers and sisters, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Good morning, my dear brothers and sisters.
as we begin the ordinary time, we also see in our gospel readings today the beginning of the ministry of Jesus. That is why we heard in our first reading today the prophecy of Isaiah that the Lord will send His light to the land of Zebulun and Naphtali where the people are walking in darkness. God will send the great light that will shine on their darkness. This is a description, a prophecy of the coming ministry of Jesus. He would bring light to those in darkness in the land of Zebulun and Naphtali. What a great mission of Jesus! What a big mission for Jesus! To change the world from darkness into light. Napakalaking mission po nito para kay Jesus ang magdala ng liwanag sa kadiliman ng mundo. But let us try to see, my dear brothers and sisters, how did Jesus begin this mission? How did Jesus begin His mission to change the world? We will see in our Gospel reading today that one of the first acts of Jesus in His ministry was to call disciples. The first action of Jesus in His mission was to turn men into disciples. He transformed ordinary fishermen into fishers of men. Yan ang kanyang unang ginawa para baguhin niya ang mundo. Inuna muna niyang baguhin ang tao. To change the world, Jesus changed persons first. Mababago mo ang mundo kapag binago mo ang tao. Many times, my dear brothers and sisters, whenever we want to change something, we immediately think, ah, I want to change the system. I want, I want to change how we do things. But seldom do we think of changing the person. That is the mission of Jesus. To change the world, He needed to change the heart of persons. Naalala ko po dati, pinagtatalunan namin ni Father Reggie dati, no? Siguro nakita nyo naman, uh, bago kayo pumasok ng Manila Cathedral, ay dadaan kayo muna sa security. Dati, ang kasama ng security guard namin dyan ay aso. K-9. No? So, they would sniff anything dangerous from you. Kaya lang, sabi namin, eh lagi namang tulog yung aso. <laughs> Kaya sabi namin, baka, baka mas effective naman kapag ka mag-invest na tayo sa isang mamahalin na, 
na uh, X-ray machine. No? I think this is more effective. Pero nag-oobserba naman ako kesyo aso man yan o X-ray machine, lahat yan nakadepende sa sa gwardiya. Kung yung gwardiya na may hawak ng aso ay lagi ring tulog, eh di tulog din naman yung aso, magkasama silang natutulog. At kung hindi rin naman babantayan ng gwardiya ang X-ray machine at titingnan niya kung ano ang nakalagay doon, hindi rin naman kikilos mag-isa ang X-ray machine. Kaya sabi ko, ang sikreto pala dapat laging busog ang gwardiya at laging may kape para laging gising. Oh, nakikinig siguro sa akin yung nakabantay sa ano no sa X-ray machine no Many times my dear brothers and sisters we invest on good technology we invest on good machines we invest on good systems but we do not invest in people How will you change if you will just invest on your system but you do not invest on your people? That is why Jesus did not first change the system. He changed men and transformed them into disciples. Jesus changed the world by first changing people. Kaya wag niyong susungitan yung mga guard natin. No? Mababait naman ko ang mga yan at masisipag. Kapag babait ka sa gwardiya, papapasukin ka niyan. No? Kaya wag niyo kong susungitan. Yan ko ang nagbabantay ng ating security. Baka minsan, ang laki ng ginagastos natin sa mga equipments, pero yung tao, tipid na tipid ka. O ito lang ang merienda nyo ha, nagtitipid tayo. Pero sa makina, ah, gastos, gastos. No? Sa tao, hindi ka nag invest How will you change if you do not change and invest on the person? One time, I was uh, talking to a head of a parish And he was beginning a formation for his lectors and commentators ministry. I thought he was going to give them a lecture or a seminar on public speaking, on good and proper pronunciation. But the first formation that he gave them is a retreat. Sabi ko sa kanya, bakit retreat ang una? Dapat proper pronunciation. Alam mo naman ng mga lectors natin. Dapat magaling magbasa. And the priest told me, you know, you first make your servants true disciples. If they change their hearts and dedicate their life to Jesus, As disciples, sila na mismo ang mag-aaral ng proper pronunciation. Kahit hindi ko bigyan ng seminar yan, kung mababago ang isip at puso nila na sila talaga ay alagad ni Jesus, sila na mismo ang gagawa ng paraan para maging mabuti ang pagsasalita nila. But if you do not make them disciples, even your lectures and seminars on good pronunciation will not suffice because they are not disciples by heart. So let us ask ourselves today, has Jesus changed my heart? Has Jesus turned me into a disciple? That is why we are celebrating today the Sunday of the Word of God. The Word of God is meant to change our hearts, to change 
the person. That is why in our second reading today from the letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians, the focus of the ministry of St. Paul is personal, not personality. Uulitin ko po. Ang misyon ni San Pablo, ang misyon ni Jesus, ay personal, hindi nakafocus sa personalidad. That is why St. Paul would say, do not say, I belong to Paul, I belong to Apollos, I belong to Cephas, I belong to this apostle. No. If you focus on the personality, you do not change your heart. When that personality is gone, you will also be gone. You are not focused on being a disciple. You are just a fan. And when your idol has gone, you will also be gone. You are not a disciple. You are just a fan. Yesterday, a family came here. Sayang hindi ko sila, hindi kami nag-abot kahapon. Pero yung kanilang batang anak na babae ay nag-iwan ng isang painting ng Manila Cathedral. She gave a painting of Manila Cathedral. This young woman, she paints. And uh, she drew a picture of the Manila Cathedral and gave it to me. And she wrote a simple letter. She said, Father, our family have been watching your online masses for the past two years. It is my birthday today, she said. But since it is my birthday, I am giving this painting to you to thank the Manila Cathedral and your ministry. Siya na nga ang my birthday Siya pa ang nagregalo. And I thought, kung ganito ang epekto ng online ministry namin, kahit umalis na ako ng Manila Cathedral, masaya na ako. Kasi nabago na ang puso ng mga nanonood ng online mass. Naging mas mapagbigay na sila. Naging mas mabuti na ang kalooban. Naging mas malapit na sila. Hindi sa akin. Hindi kay Father Reggie. At hindi man kung kaninong pari ang maiiwan dito. Malapit na sila sa Diyos. The online ministry have not focused on the personality, but focused on changing the person. My dear brothers and sisters, as we continue this celebration of the Mass, let us be reminded today that Jesus began His mission of changing the world by changing the person. Let Jesus enter our hearts today through His Word and begin changing us. Amen. Please stand. Let us now profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, Light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through Him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake He was crucified under Pontius Pilate, 
He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and His kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic Church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The great light of faith has drawn us to this altar. United in faith and practice, let us ask our Father to grant our intentions. For every petition, let us say, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For the Church of the world today, that her leaders will preach the gospel with, with wisdom and zeal. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For non-religious nations, that the people who live in darkness will see the light of faith. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For unity among Christians, that the man-made divisions may be healed through truth and charity. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For our congregation in this church, that the one Eucharist will strengthen our unity and solidarity. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. May God help us repair the harm that we have inflicted upon each other and the divisions we have created among our people. May God send the grace of His Spirit to heal our divisions and gift us with the unity for which Jesus prayed. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For the faithful departed, that Christ will be their true light and salvation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. In silence, let us now pray for our personal intentions and for all the intentions offered in this Mass. Father, you know our needs before we express them. Show your kindness again to your people gathered in the unity of prayer. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Oh, sweetie. 
Brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. Accept our offerings, O Lord, we pray, and in sanctifying them, grant that they may profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, He humbled Himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, He freed us from an ending death, and by rising from the dead, He gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, 
and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Please stand. The Mystery of Faith Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through Him and with Him and in Him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say.
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us now offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I, I am, am not, not worthy, worthy that, that you should enter under my roof, but, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Brothers and sisters, the body of Christ. Amen.
Please stand. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that receiving the grace by which you bring us to new life, we may always glory in your gift. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. We thank everyone for joining us in this a celebration of the Mass. We also thank those who have continuously followed us in our online broadcast of this celebration, the Manila Cathedral family, what they call the TMC subscribers. So thank you for always uh, tuning in to our Masses to be nourished spiritually by the Word of God. May our celebration today be truly uh, an instrument of God through His Word to change our hearts, to change our persons. And again, our greeting to all of us who are celebrating the Lunar New Year today, particularly the Filipino-Chinese community here in our country. Our wishes for you, good health, especially in the family. We wish that all your wishes and prayers be granted by our Lord. We pray that God may continue to help you and bless you. And we pray that God may continuously protect and guide your families. I will bless you with a blessing for the beginning of the year. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May God, the source and origin of all blessing, grant you grace, pour out his blessing in abundance, and keep you safe from harm throughout the year, now and forever. Amen. May he give you integrity in the faith, endurance in hope, and perseverance in charity with holy patience to the end, now and forever. Amen. May he order your days and your deeds in his peace. Grant your prayers in this and in every place and lead you happily to eternal life forever and ever. Amen. And may Almighty God bless all of you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Amen.